In this lesson, I'm going to go over how to initialize the emitter and particle properties. As discussed earlier, the particle spawn category is going to initialize the particle shapes and colors and even their movement behavior at the moment when they are being born. So at the moment of spawning the particles, we can define how they are supposed to look like. For example, if they have a color, what's their size, if they have a mass. So all of these, at the time that they are born, their, their properties are going to be defined here in the particle spawn. On top of that, we have some remaining properties that define the size of the emitter that is going to be defined here as well. So usually even if you create an empty emitter, usually they come with this initialized particle, but if they are not there, you can always add them. So you can just click on the plus sign and type in initialize particles and you will get this module. And here we're gonna go over all of these attributes to see what they do and how we can change some of the values. And then I'm gonna show you what other modules we can add here. So when the particles are spawned, we can control their behavior. So let's start with the initialized particle. I'm gonna let this to play all the time. So when we are changing or updating these values, we can immediately see the results here. And by the way, you can limit your playback area to have a shorter period of time here so we can see the updates very easier. And as you can see, I'm spawning some particles my spawn rate is 30 particles per second so i'm going to increase that to something higher than that so we can have more particles the navigation here in the preview is a little bit odd so i'm going to just focus on these all right let's go back to the initialized particle and see what we have here of course for any software that generates particles one of the major attributes that we always play with is the lifetime which is defining the life of each one of these particles after they are spawned. So currently it's set to one, meaning that each one of these particles will last for one second. And here the lifetime mode is set to direct set. By the way, some of these attributes have been updated in the newer versions. I'm using Unreal 4.26. So I have noticed that there are some additional options that are available to us now, which makes it easier to control or change the values here. For now, I'm focusing on the direct set and I'm setting the lifetime to one second, meaning that, as I said, each one of the particles is only alive for one second. If I want them to last longer, I can just increase that. This is in seconds, so two seconds right now, each one of the particles will last. Of course, we can define their color. So I'm gonna change this to, for example, a red color particle and position mode is set to simulation position, which means that this emitter, which sits inside of this Niagara system, wherever I put that Niagara system, this emitter is going to be at its origin. So it says simulation position, meaning that, again, when I drag this and bring it here, those particles are going to be spawned right where this Niagara system simulation sits. By the way, we can't see them right now because they're all being generated in the same position and there, there is no force for them to actually push them, so we can't see them. Let's go back to the emitter. And also I need to, anytime that I change anything, I need to save it so it will show up here. I will talk about what happens if we change these attributes here in the Niagara system, but for now, let's just assume that all of these values that we change here will automatically show up here for now. All right, we change the color. Position mode is set to simulation position. However, we can give it an offset. So for example, even if the Niagara system is sitting here at origin, if I set it to zero, 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 I can still give it an offset. So if I have multiple emitters here, I can give them some offset value so they are not sitting or standing right in the origin of the Niagara system. This is where you can actually give that offset. So I'm gonna just offset it in Z axis by 50 points, for example. And here, although my Niagara system is at origin, those particles are going to be generated up here. Let me save that so you can see that in, in the scene. All right, so let's set it back to zero. I'm gonna click on this yellow arrow so it goes back to the original default value. I'm gonna turn off the position offset. We do have direct set and onset. So, I mean, direct set, for example, you can specifically say that regardless of the position of the Niagara system, I want this emitter to be always at, for example, 000. Okay, let's set it back to simulation position. Mass mode, direct set, each one of these particles are having the same value of one for their mass. This mass value won't show 
any difference unless you have collisions and physics for now we are not having any kind of collision or physics so this mass doesn't do anything so you can always you can even change them to anything else their behavior here won't change the next attribute that we always change is the sprite attributes which defines the shape of these sprites these are actually by the way sprites in the next couple of lessons i will cover the render category here which by default is using a sprite renderer so i'm going to spend some time very briefly on what other options we have here to render our particles but most of the time by default our particles will show up as a sprites that means that if we want to change the look of these particles in the initialized particle we need to change the values for the sprite if we are using sprite the sprite attributes will be in effect if we are using mesh renderer the mesh attributes will be in effect so for now as i said we are focusing on sprite their size is set to uniform by default or i think by default it's set to onset so if i want i can change it to uniform and i can type in a value here this is the size of each one of these particles so now each one of these are having a size of two just to briefly have a look of other options here i can set it to random uniform so i can say that i want the particles to be having a size between one all the way to for example five so it's going to give me a random number between these for each one of the particles i'm going to have a value that is always between one and five i will emphasize on how randomness will be necessary to create some good looking particle simulations so random uniform we can have it to be non-uniform meaning that we can change their size in x and y axis so let's see what we have here non-uniform so you can see now i'm having a sprite size that is 10 in x direction and one in y direction and by the way this is only a 2d space for the sprites they're they're always looking or facing to the camera so that's why we only have x and y for their size so if i want them to be uniform i need to type in value that is identical for x and y if i want them to look like vertically long or horizontally long i need to type in different values in each one of these axes that's where we need to change this size to non-uniform and you can also make it random non-uniform meaning that you can have a range for x and range for y so let's say we want to have a range of 1 to 2 for x and a range of 10 to 20 for y so each one of these sprites are going to be non-uniformly scaled with random values between these two ranges we can set a value for the rotations let's say we want to have some random rotations so i'm going to set it to random and you can see now each one of these sprites are having a random rotation on them now that we learned about these different types of inputs here let's go back to the color mode and i'm going to change it from direct set to random range so now i can say i want to have each one of these particles to have a color between for example red I need to increase the value of it as well so value and saturation between red and white or red and green so let's choose a green color this is the hue value saturation so now uh, it's going to pick a random color between those two colors i'm going to go back to the lifetime mode and change that from an exact value of two seconds for all of these particles to something that is random so i'm going to change this to a random input for the lifetime and i'm going to have a very broad range for the lifetime of these particles so some of them are dying sooner some of them are dying a little bit later again i will emphasize on the fact that whenever we are dealing with simulations and specifically particles it's highly recommended to have some random properties for their colors for their size for their uh, life and uh, anything else that we can actually change because that gives the particles the more natural look specifically the lifetime because soon we're going to see how we can change the values depending on the age of the particle so this lifetime comes in effect very dramatically so it's best if we can have some random values for the lifetime of the particles i'm going to switch back some of these to some default values for example the size to random uniform let's increase the randomness of their lifetime to something even broader so some of them even last longer very good and let's save that the next thing that i want to quickly talk about is this sphere location what this sphere location means is that your emitter is an imaginary sphere in the space and those particles are being generated within the volume of that sphere and of course we can change the size of this sphere i can make it to 50 okay let's zoom out 
I'm going to increase the spawn rate so I have more particles, 150 or even higher than that, 500. All right, we can change this location using this offset, similar to that initialized particle there. So I can offset it by 5 in Y or anything that I want. For now, I'm going to turn it off. Sometimes we want to have the particles to be right in the origin of the Niagara system. Sometimes we want to have multiple types of particles in different areas. So this is where we can actually change their location too. In future, in the, in the last lessons in these series of tutorials, I will show you how we can connect some of these attributes. For example, this location of this emitter to some inputs that we can always change so we can have dynamic attributes or dynamic particles. We will get to that soon. All right, so let's turn this off. I'm going to show you what other options we have here. So the ones that we are mostly interested in are the locations. So for example, the box location, let's choose that. And I'm going to turn this off or delete it. Now you can see these particles are within this box. And of course, we can change the size of it as we wish. So if I want to create a line of particles, I can use a box location with some different values on X, Y, and Z of the box. All right, so that's the box location. And the next one is, for example, cylinder. You can guess what they do. Cylinder location, cone location. Let's try cone location. Okay, I'm going to turn off the box location so we can see that cone first. Yeah, it's pointing at X direction. Do you see that? So this is my cone. I can change the cone angle to something narrower. And I'm going to increase the spawn rate so we have more particles so it, we can actually see the shape of the source, the emitter. Here's our cone. I can change the direction of the cone. So if I want it to point up, I'm going to type 1 for the z-axis. All right. And by the way, these values are relative, meaning that if I have a value of 1 in z and a value of 1 in x, it's going to be diagonal. And it doesn't matter if it's 5 and 5. It's always diagonal. So this is all the relative values. So let's set it back to 0. So it's pointing up. And I'm going to turn on the box location. So now you can see that we are having a box and a cone all together. So it's mixed shape of these two locations and usually when you know what you're looking for you can just easily type the names here and it will show up a sphere location so we initialize the particle we initialize or uh, define the shape of the emitter and the next thing that we can do is also at the time of creating these particles we can change their colors of course so although i'm having this initialized particle that also changes the color of them in order to have more control over that color, I can even add another module here that lets me change the color after this. So this will overwrite whatever I have here. So here I can change the color to something different. And you can see that although I'm having that initialized color in my initialized particle module, right immediately after that, this color module is going to change them. It's going to control them. So regardless of what I have here, it's going to override that. Keep in mind that anything that we do here is only changing the properties of the particles only when they are being created. After that, we can control them later. So we're going to see how we can change them over their life. Let me change the shape of the source to a sphere. I like this sphere a little bit more. I'm going to delete the cone location. I'm hitting delete on keyboard. So sphere location. And you can always move these around as well. So. Here are our particles, and I don't like the new color, so I'm going to remove that color module that I've just added. Again, the beauty of these modules, individual modules, is that you can delete them or disable them anytime that you like. All right, I like these colors. I'm going to add a wind force. Let's just start with a simple one. I'm dedicating one lesson just talking about these forces. For now, I'm going to just hit fix issue. I will talk about why we are seeing that, and we are just skipping it right now. So wind force, I just added that. And I'm going to give the wind a direction. Let's say we want to have the particles to go up. So I'm going to change the direction of the wind to Z axis. And I'm going to give it some speed. So let's say 50. And you can see the particles are 
moving up because of that wind force just wanted to show you how we can add some speed or some forces in the particle spawn subcategory as well and i'm going to save this and it's showing up in the niagara system i'm going to save that and it's supposed to show up here as well and you can see i'm having two of those niagara systems so i'm going to delete one of them and i'm going to keep the other one i'm going to zero its values to zero 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 one and i'm going to bring it up here we go this was just an introduction of how we can initialize the particles i can wrap up this lesson in the next lesson we are going to spend some time on how we can control these particles over their life so we're going to learn how to do that in the next lesson using the particle update modules